Hello, everybody, and welcome. Welcome to our second session of the day for Moodle MOOC 4. This is uh, Nellie Deutsch, and I'm going to be introducing our speaker. If you could just add in the chat box where you're from and anything else you'd like to add as we go. Um, if you have any technical problems, feel free to add them in the chat if you can't hear or anything else. Uh, just add it in the chat and we'll try to see how um, we may be able to help. If you find that um, you're having some technical issues and you're getting all kinds of messages that your connection is slow, just click on the uh, webcams and you can stop receiving video. Okay, that's one way of uh, taking care of that. All right, so there's our speaker for today and uh, with a start and a little bit about Jackie Gerstein who has uh, an ED, which is an educational doctorate. Uh, Jackie is a lifelong learner with a passion for um, all aspects of, she calls it authentic education, I call it real learning. Uh, she has a, as I said, an EDD, a master's there, Jackie's coming through there in the webcam, a master's in curriculum and instruction, and a graduate certificate in gifted education. And uh, she truly is gifted as an educator, but I think she meant something else. Uh, she's working on another MA degree, and I'm wondering why not a PhD. This one is in technology and education. Uh, she teaches, I think you finished that, didn't you? She teaches gifted elementary students, or they teach her. So you can tell that Jackie and I have a lot in common, and that is that uh, learning is about teaching, and we learn a lot when we, as teachers, teach. She says, and this is a quote, I don't do teaching for a living. I live teaching as my doing. And technology has amplified my passion with a little pottery, and I'd like to learn more about that. Making and Zumba dancing thrown in from some extra fun. So I got you saying that. Um, I'm going to go to your session so you can get started. I hope you can hear all this. Uh, let me know in the chat box if everything is good as we go. And people will be coming in. Of course, this is being recorded and it will be available with the same link that brought you here. All right. So, Jackie, are you there? I hear echoes. Yeah. So you are. So, um, great to uh, see you kind of in the shadow there. Thank you, Nellie. Thanks. All right. So, um, I'll let you go ahead. And if you have any questions or anything, I'll be in the background. Thanks. Thank great. you. Thanks. Can everybody hear me okay? Wow. I love that this is international. Y'all hearing me? Great. This is why I love, I, I have the saying that I love the 21st century. I just wish it started a little sooner because look at this. We're, we're meeting um, globally. Echo Nelly. Yeah, I don't have a headset. That. That should, should, should be fine. Off. Yeah, it should be fine. Yeah, if, if, it, if she turns hers off. How's that now? She turned her audio off. Should Tom, I like your little thumbs up. You okay now? I don't, I don't like echoes either, so I want to make sure you're not. Great. Thanks, Helena. All right, so I teach a class in Social Network Learner. It's a master's class. Um, I find that people actually like my headset. John Line, they actually say it's worse with my headset, given my headset and my setup. So, um, is it echoing now? No, I've, had, I've tried it. Okay. Oh, some say yes and no. I'm going to keep going because you know what? I don't talk a lot because I believe in interactivity. And the 
I teach a graduate class for Boise State called the Social Network Learner, and I'm going to share some of the assignments with you. And being a social network learner means that, thanks for the feedback in the chat, I actually teach online now for three different universities, and I'm on webinars. I don't use this one, but I use other ones. So I watch the chat a lot, So and I like back channeling. And, um, <clears throat> and what I'm going to do is watch this. Well, I think you could turn down your own sound. Do you want to tell them how to turn down their sound? And then how do I turn mine? I'll actually do it on the them. So um, I'm, do I'm multitasking. So one of my beliefs is, as being a 21st century learner and teacher, and I believe we're all learners and teachers in, <clears throat> in this, um, that should turn me down a little bit. Tell me if it's too much. Um, I actually turned it down on mine, too. <clears throat> so I don't want to spend too much time. Just tell me if that's better. So part of, I actually, my bio now states one of the responsibilities of a 21st century educator is to share information. And so that's what I do. So hopefully today I'm just going to give you a lot of information in this time. And um, as my students say, they can't believe how much I get into a little bit, but then I give you lots of resources that you can look at later. And um, so what I'm going to do is get started with that. This thing's called a thing link. And I'm going to put links in the chat and have, like I said, I believe in interactivity, so I'm going to have you doing a lot of things. If you click in that link, you'll, it'll actually take you, and I'd like to show tools to, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> no fog in my throat. <coughs> Let me get a drink. It'll take you to a thing called Thing Link, and it's getting, Thing Link's getting a lot of press right now. But if you go into that link and you scroll over, <coughs> you scroll over, you're actually going to get links to other things. And so this is basically my whole course, and this thing's full of resources. So if you share, and I don't think WizIQ allows you to show do web tours. I'm going to show you a video, but I don't think you could do a web tour. Yes, thing link. Josephina, if you want to, if you did one and you want to share, I'm going to ask you to share a lot because that's what I, again, I believe in interactivity and that when I teach part of being social network learner, just online, it's face to face, it's, it's wherever and whenever. So I always believe that no matter if I'm doing a conference presentation or if I'm teaching my older kids or my younger kids, that, um, Okay. You should be able to view mine without having an account. So click on that. Yeah. So you'll be able to create them, you need an account, but you don't need an account to view them. So again, if you go into that and you and you click around. Yeah, you don't need an account. You just need an account to um, to make them, and they're pretty cool. So that's that's just so later you have all the resources. This is an overview of what I cover in the class, and I'm going to give you a little taste of each piece so you can see what my students, I'm going to show you and I have you do some things that my students do over a 16-week period. This next one, then, <coughs> It's just, it's a pretty cool, <coughs> I can't seem to get rid of this little morning morning um, frog in my throat. I know some of you, it's later in the day. This was a really cool um, little graphic about connected educators. And you're obviously connected educators because you're here. <laughs> and it's getting some people, uh, colleagues who aren't here, to, to become connected educators. But again, this, this is a pretty cool graphic. 
and it also really is what I cover in my class. Oh, cool, Jared. Okay. All right, this is a little quiz that I developed. Again, I told you that I like making it interactive. This, for some reason this morning, this took me some time to um, load, and it's a, gra it's a little quiz. Uh, world soccer really is world soccer. All right. So go take that quiz and come back and tell me what type of connected educator you are. If you're having trouble with a voting, come back. Like I said, I used to not have trouble with a voting, but this morning it seemed to take more time than I wanted. And I'm, I don't want you to waste a lot of time. It's just a fun little quiz that I developed to, to look at the different level of connected educators. It should take you a couple minutes to complete. And come back and report to me what kind of connected educator you are. And again, you have these later, and um, I have a slide share of this presentation, so you could actually share it with other people and have them do the same type of things that I'm doing with you. And you could ask me questions or make comments. If I, I also believe in differentiated instruction, so. If you don't feel like taking the quiz or if it's not voting, you could you could come and ask me questions, make some comments. I do like them. So now you want to put in how to do that? I think you do you could do it with Moodle. So we are taking the quiz, and I'd love to know what type of connected educator you are. I'm playing with the interface. So now, while they're taking that, what's where's this screen share? Oh, I see under screen. All right. Yeah, I have to do that with Adobe Connect. I got it. Does it take um, lots of bandwidth? Uh, desktop, it doesn't, but it requires Java unless you're on the desktop. Are you on a Mac? Yeah. Oh, okay. So it shouldn't be a problem. And th there are also polls with um, instant response that I guess you didn't know about. Yeah, this is more, if you look at the quiz, you actually get based on, hey, Tom, I had no doubt that you're the people here and Josephina, that you're igniters. See, this, this was pretty cool. This quiz allows you to then, you know how you take the quiz in the, in the um, over-the-counter magazines, and you get some type of type at the end. That's what how I developed this quiz. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. See, I see that's cool. It's kind of fun. No lurkers, huh? I bet a few of you who haven't commented in the chat are lurkers, but I have a different opinion of lurkers. We're talking about social network learning, and I don't think there's a problem with lurkers. Some people say it's Developmental, I, I, I think introverts and people who are lurkers are, can learn just as much as people who are participating. That's pretty funny. Yeah, I am too, Tom. I'm actually pretty introverted, even though um, it doesn't come out in my teaching. I'm not quiet, but I'm introverted. So, All right, did everybody have a chance? I only heard, I know there's about... Um, 10 or 12 of you in here. I've heard from about four. That's okay if you're lurking, but is anybody still um, taking it before I move on? All right. So, so 
and then they give you a little background. I created this little, you should all see that part I figured out. You should all see the video in the middle, yes? Anybody still there? See, I'm, I actually asked for participation. Can you see this? Thanks, Effie. You can see the media player, yes? Thank you. There we go. All right. This is a little Powtoons. Again, I always, I always try to throw, get as much in in my time as possible. And I'm showing you some more tools as well as showing you um, what it means in my class to be a social network learner. So you should hear this. And I'm going to turn off my mic if I can figure out how to do that so that you don't hear the echo. You click. I still haven't figured out that part. You click on. That's great. Yeah, you click on the icon. Yeah, you click on the icon, uh, Jackie. The icon just above your webcam. There's a a microphone. Just click on it. It'll put a a line through it. using Powtoon. You'll have to, uh, Jackie. I said that's part of that's an advanced organizer um, of what I cover in the class and what we'll be covering today and thanks Kirstina Kirstens yeah I forgot to unmute the mic so you know we talk about social networking and there is some theoretical background to it and I like to sh have my students really explore what some of the modern day concepts are. <laughs> it's um, New Mexico. They're, they're, um, they're um, vegas. It's pretty nice, huh? I love New Mexico. Um, if you ever get a chance, come visit. So these are some of the concepts I cover. New Mexico. My, my uh, sister-in-law thought it was in a different country. So specializers, yeah, they like to share specific information on specific sites. So it's pretty cool to see the diversity here. So some of the concepts, I have them explore. Let me know just by a thumbs up. Have you heard of connectivism? Thumbs up if you've heard of that concept before. It's George Siemens. Or Pablo. Oh, good. Going to see some new um, information. I'm not going to cover anything in depth. Again, I'm just here to share some resources. How about Wagner's, Wanger's Communities of Practice? Thumbs up, thumbs down for that one. Again, they, all these are, help inform what it means to be a social network from a more theoretical background. And then, thanks. Oh, good. 
Well, again, I'm going to share some resources. You'll be able to go in more depth later. And then the last one are personal learning environments or personal learning networks, PLEs. Thumbs up or thumbs down if you've heard of those before. Most of you probably have. That's more common um, terminology. And you're here. Like I said, you're here and you're doing modal and you're doing these classes. So that says a lot right there. Now we get a star from that. Yay, Chris. Chris o. So what I had my students do is um, I'm getting that. I had them look at these practices and they had to create a non-linguistical representation of their understanding of them. And what was cool with that is, and here's a link to their to, to some of their work. Yes, we are lifelong learners, especially in this world. Yeah, I'll explain that in a second. Especially in this world with information's changing so fast and technology. Like who knows who knows about the Oculus? Oh, I spelled it wrong. It's a new, it's gonna be um, so we could see um, more virtual world, more um, virtual reality is going to be really enhanced. Who knows that Google just came up with a new classroom, LMS. I mean, things are changing so fast that um, we have to be lifelong learners. So back to this, what, what I had students do is, <coughs> We know that if you base, it's based on visual thinking and translating information in your brain to another format. And so if you look at this link, I just wrote it. These were some of the examples that my students did um, to, to express how they understood the, the materials. Oh, these are some resources that discover that. But this one did, it was pretty cool. Yeah, it's a project. It's one of the course projects. I'm covering some of the things they did. <coughs> they started with the theoretical background. And Gretel did a periodic table of connectivism. And all those little elements represented different concepts from PLEs, um, connectivism, and communities of practice. It was pretty cool. If you click on that link again, you'll see, um, no, she was teaching chemistry. See, that was Gretel's, that was Gretel's specialty, and that was, she came up with it. Um, which, what was really interesting, this, this semester I had a student do a, do a musical interpretation of, of what the three theoretical concepts means to them. So if you click on that link, you'll see some of this. This gentleman did a thing link, which I just showed you how it represented, and I'm not even going to try to say it, Da Vinci's virtue, whatever man. And if you click into his thing link, each of these parts had links in it that had images that represented the different concepts. And what, the, what it does is it allows you to process with different parts of your brain. And I also want to model when I'm teaching to... If we're really talking about social network learning, we know that people, and you, how many of you know what universal design for learning is? I knew you would. I encourage you to look it up. And that's not what this is about. But basically, universal design for learning is allowing your students and in intentionally um, <coughs> formatting your instruction, so there's different means of representation, expression, and engagement. So this allowed students to show me what they learned about the concepts using uh, modalities that were comfortable to, to them. Yeah, go visit their website. It's really, I, I, so, I, I teach a class in it that I didn't design, but it's, it's pretty amazing stuff. So by me allowing students to say, do a periodic table. Write a, write a song. Do collages. Again, if you click into that into that, um, that, what, that blog I wrote about it, you'll see each student chose a way to, to express themselves in unique ways. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So again, if we're looking at social network learning, we, we really respect and honor that 
individual differences that the people were communicating with and try to understand them and give them opportunities to express themselves. All right, so then how many of you are on Twitter? If you're not, I'm going to yell at you, but no, I won't really, but. Thumbs up. Oh, Effie, we got to get you on Twitter. If I was, if, if we had more time, I would be getting all of you on Twitter. Tom, you can tweet. You're doing it right now. So if you look at this, um, this quote, educators really can't afford to not be on Twitter. Our educational landscape is changing very rapidly. Our students are using this technology every day, and as educators, we must continually be growing and finding new ways to learn and to reach our students. So this is a, something you could look at later. Oh, that's interesting. Did you try? I'll talk about a tweet deck in a minute. Here's um. Here's a slideshow later. You can look at personal professional development using social media. Again, for your information. Here's a beginner's guide to using Twitter for educators. Again, you'll have a link later that you can use. All right. So how many of you have a tweet deck? Anybody have a tweet deck set up? Or some kind of client? Like Hootsuit? That might help you, Tom. So I'm going to show you my screen. I have a, I am on tweet, my tweet deck all the time. All right. So I don't know how this is going to work. Oops. I want to get to my tweet deck. You should be seeing my tweet deck in a second. So if you look at my tweet deck, I don't know if the, the chat will pop up. But you can see I follow, right now ISTE is having a conference and I'm following them. And this deck, this is going hog wild because everybody's tweeting from the conference. I follow Maker Ed. Game-based learning, mobile learning, tinkering. This is the, actually the class I'm teaching that I'm showing you, EdTech SN, and they need to tweet out during the class. But this allows me to filter, and it also allows me to keep, um, keep track of what's going on. I'm really into Maker Ed right now, and this was an amazing video about girls not being um, honored for their science, for their brains. And as you can see, here goes, I'm, I'm following the conference that's really, it's a little too much. But here's like something about virtual field trips using Google Hangout. So it really keeps me in touch of what's going on currently. I was saying um, what you were saying in the chat. All right, so what I'd like you to do is spend a second, and if you're not on, if you're actually using a tweet deck, that's cool. But here's a link to the hashtags. Like you saw, you organize your tweet deck into hashtags based on personal interest. What I'd like you to do is go into that document and um, find some hashtags that you would possibly follow. So another interactive piece here. Again, go into this doc. You have to scroll down. There's some introductory materials in the, top, in the top, but it lists tons of educational. So go through and come back and um, share with us two or three hashtags that you are following or that look interesting based on your professional interests right now. And let me know of any questions as you're doing this. You're welcome, Josephina. It shouldn't let it it's just a Google Doc. Just let it hang out for a second. Once it's in, it's quick. 
Let me get let me get another link. I see some of you are in there. I can tell by the little animals on top. If you look at the animals on top, that that's showing how many are viewing it. Let me get you another link. Here's one by Teacher Thought, which is a really amazing blog. And here's another resource for you, Pablo. Maybe this one will come faster. <coughs> So again, we're, you're identifying possible areas of interest. That you might follow when you set up your tweet deck. Are you already following that, Kristen's? Is that a new one you want to follow? Are you teaching German? Have you found any good resources with that one? I could actually, if you actually copy and paste a hashtag into your search bar, it'll actually come up. Oops, didn't copy and paste, copy. I'm seeing what Learn German looks like. Oh, I thought the hashtag would come up. Didn't come up for me. I can actually do it in my um, tweet deck too. So again, any cool hashtags you find, please share with us. Ed Chat's really good. They actually do. We're going to talk about um, so I'm going to share my Twitter deck again, just to, my tweet deck. Looks like it's just trying to connect to service. Oh, does ThingLink have its own hashtag? That's kind of cool. Oh, see, it's not coming up. So, you might be seeing my tweet deck. I was doing Moodle. So, it, you could actually do searches, which is pretty cool. This was Learn German. And that way you could discover new columns. There's the Learn German. And then I could add this column if I wanted to add a column to my tweet deck. Way down here. So it's really a cool, there's Ed Chat. One of you had listed that. I use the Ed, Ed Chat. There's the woman who is doing uh, ThingLink. She, she's she's kind of like the spokesperson for it. All right. No, I'm not using Safari. Use it in order to screen share with Macs. Oh, it's not working with the uh, Mozilla? No, sorry. Safari for the Mac. All right. Well, I'm not, I don't want to switch over now. I won't use screen share anymore. I'll put links in. We're, we're cool. All right. So this was a really cool quote. Yeah, that's a really good one, Pablo. A lot of people follow that one. I see that one a lot for English learning. So this was, my students have to reflect on the activities after they're done with it. And Gretel did just a, such a nice, um, I'm just going to read to you because it's a cool quote. Not only is Twitter a conversation, it is a whole conversation where people with common interests come together to exchange information in 140 characters or less. The fact that the conversations are short does not mean that they are not powerful. The bits and pieces offered, like um, appetizers, can take you anywhere and nowhere. They are what you make them. They are bits and pieces of brain candy. 
More importantly, my brain and also learned that you cannot hoard your Twitter findings. You must share them. That's what that's what we're talking about here. That's a big theme today when I'm talking to you. Um, like Arianna Huff said, it's not just about consuming content, but sharing it, passing it on, and adding to it. Again, I'm going to um, reinforce that being a social network learner means that we share out information. So what do you mean? Are you asking me about my student interests? Nellie, all my students are teachers. They're getting their master's in ed tech. Everybody, because what I find interesting is that with teachers, you know, we know their interests, or we know, at least we think we know what we'd like them to do. But I'm wondering about other teachers who teach different um, content areas and if their students have a right to have interests kind of thing. So you're asking this of everybody, right? In the chat, in the webinar? Yes. All right, so um, I kind of got lost there, so I'm going to keep going. Just in time, professional development. How many of you have to go to those in-services that kind of um, sometimes you're interested in, sometimes you're not? Does anybody have to do staff trainings? I'm getting us back involved again. <laughs> there you go. So what that's lacking is that it's not, it's just in case we need it rather than just in time, on demand. So sometimes we're being forced to learn things that really don't have relevancy, and I don't, I don't even think kids should be forced to learn things that don't have relevancy, but that's a whole other webinar. So this is called Just in Time or On Demand Professional Development. You're doing it today. Um, and I don't know if that's a question for me or for everybody in the, in the chat. OK. My students are asked to learn things. I call it Web 2.0. And so they are asked to learn like those theories I talk about or how to use Twitter or they need, they're asked to attend five live webinars during, during a three week period. But within those webinars, they could choose whatever topic they want. So I think that's the choice. We also know that um, by giving choice, the brain likes it. The brain likes getting choice. So they, they're forced to do certain activities, but they're not forced to learn certain content. And one of my favorites these days is EdWeb. Thumbs up, thumbs down, actually click into it. They offer like three to five webinars a week on all kinds of topics. So I highly recommend them. Have any of you heard of the EdWeb people? They're really growing, and they have different, I'll go look at it. They're free. They have people from all over the world present. They have different con, like different focus areas, common core standards for the United States, game-based learning, mobile learning, um, administrator pieces. So, yeah, EdWeb is great. That's getting back again to on-demand professional development. And my students are asked to go into these webinars and actually contribute or find some ways to, to add to the community. Again, once you, Pablo, when I, when I give you the slides to these, you, these will all be links, so you'll be able to check them out. That's what this is anyway. Okay, tweet chats. Anybody here do tweet chats? If you're not on Twitter, you probably don't do tweet chats. But tweet chats are these really, they're probably these Twitter conversations on steroids. They're these weekly sessions, sometimes bi-monthly, where people are all on real time and they give a topic. Like um, maker education, what are some 
tools you're using in the classroom to promote maker education. And so for an hour, everybody will just, just throw out ideas and questions and things like that. So again, click into that link and see and come back and let me know of any Twitter chats, tweet chats that might be of interest to you. If I don't give you something that you're going to think about or try or do after this webinar, then I failed you. My, my whole thing with teaching, whether if it's for an hour or whether it's for a semester, is every time we meet, if you don't get something of practical use that you're going to take outside of my t this session together, our time together, then I failed you and it's a waste of time. And I don't want to, I don't want to fail you. So go in and, thanks Nellie, and, and, and look at some Twitter chat that you might try. All you would have to do is, even on Twitter, is to follow, I don't use it, but there's a tweet chat twub or something. Where you can actually follow a Twitter chat without a deck. Here, I'll give you a link to that. Actually, what I do, Effie, for my class that I'm demonstrating here today, it's EdTech SN. So if you check that out, They're actually my students tweeting um, tweeting resources out. Each week they're asked to tweet certain resources out. So here's actually a link. So yes, a lot of people will use them for their classes. They're using them for the conference. They're used for real-time talks. So you can actually create one for your class and have them tweet out resources. Or you could say at 6 o'clock on Wednesday night, we're going to have a tweet chat. And the topic is such and such. And everybody will be there in real time. So you could do, what this is allowing you to do is synchronous and asynchronous communication. Any other um, tweet chats and anybody is looking good? that you'd like to try, this page has so many on them, the, the uh, tweet reports. What else looks good to folks that you might check out? I'm not going to do follow-up. You won't be penalized for not participating. That's a joke. Um, but any other tweet chats that look good for folks? Out of all the assignments we do, to tell you the truth, in my class, tweet chats are the ones that people like the least. And it's because it's such an overwhelming amount of information and so high speed that if you're not used to what it looks like, then um, people don't like it. Oh, it looked like somebody was typing. Shows people typing. That's what I'm waiting for. I was seeing if you like if there's any other tweet chats that look good. It doesn't have to be English. So you could find um, you could find what's what's the the language of origin for your learners. I'm just I'm from the United States, so I'm just showing you English. But this is happening all over the world. So what's your what's your language of origin, Effie? Your students. So just look for French. Just look for French um, tweet chat. French, French education. So yeah, I'm just showing you English, but Twitter is popular all over the world. So, and there was just a report out 
couple weeks ago, educators use Twitter more than any other population um, who uses Twitter, which is really interesting. It is most, again, educators are using it more than any other population, and that's, that's really exciting for me. That's why it's such a great place to share resources. This next one is called Educator as a Blogger. And here's the resource for that. I'll put it in the chat. And if you look down at the bottom of that resource, you could click in and listen to me. Um, you'll see there's a mentor mob, or now it's called Lesson Path. And it's a really nice way, again, one of my goals here today is show you some cool tools as well as um, some strategies for social networking. It's called a, me a lesson, a lesson um, path or mentor mob. And it's a little slidey bar. And each one of these is a resource. And you could, if you click in them, they'll actually take you to the resources. But it's um, one that I prepared called Educators as Bloggers because I believe that all educators should be, yeah, Mighty Bells is another one. And we'll talk about that when we talk about curation in a, in a few minutes. That's one of the things I believe in too, too as a social network learner. But if you're a blogger, which I think all educators should be, please put your blog in to share, us, share with us your blog. So if anybody's blogging, please put in a link to your blog so we could see what your blog looks like. We'll grab a link to it if you're blogging. I actually watched an ISTE presentation. Um, that's the big ed tech conference going on now. And I really am for blogging. I believe it's a great way to reflect. I believe kids should be blogging and educators to keep track, keep part of it. Do you, is it part within MOOC or do you have a link to that blog, to your blog that you could share that's um, not within the learning management system? You can actually share, you can bring, um, you can make Moodle blogs public now. Well, he uses blog. Thanks, Tom. Oh, it's not linking to anything. Let me see if I could get it to work. There's something with the last, is it dot com? Dot D E. Denmark? I can't get, oh, there it is. Oh, you do Second Life, huh? I had to take that it added some letters on the end. There's Tom's blog. How do you make it public? Look at people's blogs and see what they're about. Alina has three of them. So Nella, here's a question for you. How can they copy and save this chat so they have the resources to look at some of the things that are being shared down in the in the um, presentation? It says copy chat above the chat box. Right. We'll, we'll cover that. The link's open and now I'm stalling out. Hold on. You might want to copy this at the end so you have each other's blogs and li other links that we shared. My computer's going a little wild right now. Let me get it back. Too many open windows. Nice um, cover. Nice screenshot. I mean, um, Photograph on the cover of yours, Helena. Very, that's really a pretty picture. There's leaves and stuff. It looks really cool. Oh, sorry. I have to wait till it stops stalling out on me. Thanks, Tom. I, I tell teachers that if you don't think you have time to blog, 
even do things like photo essays, take pictures, take video. It doesn't, again, multiple means of expression. Even if it means sitting down, like the other day I wanted people to know about the creative expressions my students were doing in class. They did the work. I just aggregated it, and that blog post only took me about an hour to write. But it's really cool to document and then be able to share with other people. The next activity they did, and I'm going to go through the, through the rest of them fairly quickly. Again, you'll have the resources. Is I had a student yesterday, and we use Facebook actually for communication. I'm just showing them some tools that they don't need a learning management system to use. And she, we talked about digital footprints. And she said, I Googled me, and actually that's an activity you could do right now while I'm talking if you want. If you've never done it, go Google yourself and see what comes up. So while I'm talking, go Google yourself and see what comes up. And she wrote in the Facebook page, I'm so proud of myself. I Googled myself and almost nothing came up. Um, so, and she said, just my Facebook account. And I said, that's not necessarily a good thing. It's good that she's private and she keeps her reputation. I keep everything open. And if you Google me, you'll see that I have things like my blog comes up, my conference presentation. I said part of being an, uh, an educator is creating this positive digital reputation. And because I have this huge online presence, I got my job at Boise State. They actually offered me an adjunct because they liked my tweets. I, I just got an uh, uh, invitation to do a session on mindsets in Florida, I mean in D.C. for a charter school because of an online reputation. So that's really cool. See, that's, that's interesting. That's the one that people are hitting on first, Nellie, and I'd love to see what comes up with you guys when you Google yourself. But again, this idea of being very intentional with your blogs, with your conference presentation, I do slide shares, a lot of slide shares, and I'm going to give you again. I put it in the beginning, but I'll do it again. Um, and that comes up so that people are seeing what I'm sharing professionally. And um, actually, my Weebly, my, my uh, first is my ePortfolio, second is my blog, third is Twitter, and then conference presentations. See, Facebook, I'm on Facebook, but Facebook doesn't even come up for me because I have a stronger online presence elsewhere. Well, Tom, I think you'll have to put your city. You're welcome. I'll give you a link in a second. So what I have my students doing, you can look at this, is, um, and I'll just go over a few last tidbits and share some links with you so you have those resources for later. Again, somebody, my name isn't popular, but somebody like Tom would have to put a city down or a, a country or state. And they had to come up with a plan to, to, be, to create a positive digital footprint. And these were some of their presentations. Oh, that's cool. Another thing they look at is de de developing their personal le learning networks and diagramming them out. Here's some resources about that. And they're creating a diagram. This is Sylvia Languages, and I really love hers. I always use hers as an example. This experience has allowed me to look at the communities in a new light. And what they did was actually um, put both their online and their face-to-face -face communities, because they're all part of their learning communities. And then a big one I'm into right now is content curation. Thank you. And I'll, I'll, get that, I'll grab that link for you in a second. Um, I really I like the idea of content creation, and that's their activity actually this week. I've taught, this is the fourth time I'm teaching this class. Um, to really learn how to aggregate valuable resources and share those out. And so let me just share, again, you'll have this slide presentation as part of the, as part of um, resources.
and let me get to some resources so you have something. So as so um, the other pieces we cover, and you could ask some questions now. I share some resources, and that's Scoop It. If you don't know Scoop It, it's a great. I use Scoop It to curate my content, and then I have them look at social. I'm gonna actually I could speed ahead. I forgot. I don't want to hurry things through, so I'll just go to the uh, end. All right, so you have this one. That's the Weebly site that has a lot of resources in. So again, let me know of any questions while I share the last of these resources. This is, so that's a website that I created, a Weebly website that has all these topics with resources listed under each one. This one has, um, oh, you use Scoop It too. Good for you. This is the slide presentation. It's a little different. I modified it a little bit for today. But again, like I said, I was trying to show you um, a full, full course in an hour. Here's a blog post that explains the activities that I used in class and shows some examples. Yeah, Scoop It is my choice for aggregate. If you use Scoop It, you can throw some of those links in. All right, so thanks for coming. What is one thing that you'll do, try out, because you came to this session today? Here, I'm actually going to show, um, here's a um, video about content curation that's also in the slideshow. It's really good explanation about it. Safia, Safi, sorry if I kill names. I hate, I hate not saying your name right. So one thing that you'll try because of today's session. And that slide, the slide share I just showed you, Safe, has um, lots of links. Oh, good. I like, um, some people are using Google's Blogspot. I actually like WordPress. If you're doing it with kids, I recommend kid blogs, older kids, um, edu blogs. So there's a lot of platforms. Anybody else? Try one thing new because if that's the slides step in. It has a lot. It has about six, seven slides on content curation. Again, I just throw out a lot of things and hope you'll just go look them over afterward. That's my whole intent is to get you. Oh, good. Do you know which one you're going to try, Christina? Kirsten's. Try a tweet deck. I love it. It might make it work better. I, know I do everything off a of tweet deck now, Tom. Okay. Any other ideas before we go? I do appreciate you spending the time together. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and thank you. That was awesome, um, Jackie. That was really, really engaging. Um, I'm sure that those that didn't turn up are going to be sorry after they watch the recording because there's nothing like a live online environment to get the juices going, I think. So, uh, thank you everyone for joining. Thank you, Jackie, for coming this early in the morning before, uh, getting your voice there <laughs> together. I can yeah, appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. And, and Please stay connected. I mean, learning doesn't happen unless you, uh, you know, stay connected and continue uh, learning from one another. Um, of course, including uh, Jackie, who loves to connect. So uh, 
get on to her uh, Twitter. Did you add your Twitter hanger here, um, handle here? Oh, there it is. So tweet and uh, retweet and share. I mean, I think that's the, I really truly think that that's the best way to go is with the, with Twitter. Um, definitely for educators. There's Tom. And of course, um, you can copy the chat. Uh, Tom generally copies it and adds it to the course feed, which is the discussion forum where we can continue uh, the discussions. And of course, we can do that on Twitter, which is uh, very vibrant. So thank you. Thank you so much, Jackie and everyone. And copy the chat. Okay, are you ready? Just let me know if you copy the chat. Give me a thumbs up if you've copied it so that... Um, I don't close the session before you get it. Hello, Louise. All right, danke, gracias. <laughs> That's cute. All right, so have a great day, everyone. There's Jackie waving, and there's my Finnish little elf that I just got in Finland. Isn't it, isn't it adorable? I just love it. Okay, got myself a present, and my kids, of course. But All right. Bye, everyone. Adios.